Hello everybody. Uh, many uh, since a long time, I am seeing the many of you are asking for the Chief Seattle speech. Uh, I know that is a bit difficult, not very difficult, but it is a bit difficult for you all to understand. So I have brought for you, you know, selective pictures which can help you in understanding the chapter better. And you will also have, you see, uh, a video where you will see you will be direct. It's like from Google Earth where you'll be directed to that place in which. This everything has ha had happened a long time back. Okay, that place, that Squamish, that tribe, the people of uh, that region, how they lived and what of it. We will get an idea from the map also. We will be taken directly to that spot where they used to live and from where they were removed by the whites or the white Americans. All right. So before, first we will see the uh, map. So we will see where these people used to live and uh, then how their land was taken away because of imperialism and everything and then we will move into detail. I hope this will be clear to you. We will do it in two parts. First part we will do it today because as it is a bit difficult, the, uh, the, you know, the explanation is also going to be a bit detailed in a, in a detailed way. So it's better we divide the topic into two parts and first we will discuss the first half. Next class we will discuss the second half. All right. And I am sure that you will not have any more doubt in it. All right. So let's begin with it. And if you are liking the video, don't forget to subscribe. So we have already seen the map of that particular place of the Squamish people, the place where they lived. And so we will begin our topic, Chief Seattle's speech, as you had all requested. First, who is Chief Seattle? Why suddenly we are talking about a person? Why is his speech so very important? You see, Chief Seattle was a leader of the Squamish tribe in the Washington Territory in the 19th century. So he was a very important person. He was the leader of a Squamish tribe, point number one. Point, you can be asked. It is a very simple question, isn't it? The name of the topic is Chief Seattle's speech. So who is this Chief Seattle? We have to know first. He is the leader of the Squamish tribe, point number one. If you do not want to remember about the Washington Territory and all that, it's fine. But he is the leader of the Squamish tribe. And you can also remember in the 19th century all right next his long and moving speech in 1854 you may not remember the year has been widely cited as a, cited means widely uh, it was told um, um, widely regarded as the powerful bittersweet plea or request for respect for Native Americans' rights and environmental values so you see there are two particular things for which his speech is important number one he requested for you know the respect of the native americans number one number two he also requested or tried to protect the environmental values as you see in imperialism what happens is today i have this part of my land tomorrow i want to increase so i try to take away other lands also so what for am I taking these lands? Do you think I just want to grow a lot of crops? I want to, you know, I want to uh, plant trees and keep a number of wild animals over there. No, most people want more land for more profit, isn't it? So for more profit, either you will make factories over there or you will use, uh, utilize the land or, you know, um, exploit the land for your own benefit, for your own profit, isn't it? So that way you are also exploiting the land and land is like, you know, your mother, you need to protect your land so uh, the native americans wanted to protect their land and they knew that once the land was taken away from them what would happen they would not be able to protect the land so he was also worried about the land so the two things next after this we will directly move to the lines of the story yonder sky we will uh, we will read this very carefully so that you have no problem anywhere over here yonder sky that has wept Tears of compassion, very uh, clearly you read, tears of compassion, Com tears of compassion means it is written, I have mentioned for you, sympathy of nature. You see, for yonder sky, there, yonder means there, there you see the blue sky, in that bl the blue sky, the nature around us has given us so many things. For years, they have helped us with so many things. Tears of compassion, they have always been sympathetic to us. We don't have to request for rain and there is rain. We don't request for sun, there is sunlight. And all of these are very essential for us and we get it for nothing. 
upon my people for centuries untold for many years we have got all these things even without asking and which to us appears changeless and eternal and it seems that nothing is going to change this is going to remain the same for years today is fair tomorrow it may be overcast with clouds you see the picture just beside this you see it is just a clear uh, sky with uh, with you know the blue sky the white clouds but immediately the things can change in a moment isn't it nothing is constant the things can change so it can be a cloudy sky so th what does this mean this has a symbolic meaning that today you may think you are very happy tomorrow this happiness can be wiped out my words are like the stars that never change you see my words are like the stars you see always you will see the stars in the sky isn't it uh, maybe it is not visible sometimes but it is there so my words are like that they are constant they are true whatever seattle says that means whatever i say the great chief at washington can rely upon with as much certainty as he can upon the return of the sun or the seasons so i am the leader and i take you know the responsibility of my people and i am the spokesperson so whatever i say you can have trust in me in my words just like you have trust in sun and the seasons that every year they are going to come or every day they are going to come back uh, the sun or the seasons same way my words are also equally dependable the white chief two things are there see white chief is the governor stevens and the big chief is george washington these two are important who is the white chief and who is the big chief the big chief is obviously the president of us george washington at washington sends us greetings of friendship and goodwill so the information has come from george washington via whom via the governor stevens what has he said he said that i want to extend friendship with you i want to be your friend and i also want to give you i also want you to depend on us okay this one who has said the uh, president of us this is kind of him for we know he has little need of our friendship in return we know that we are very less powerful isn't it we are not at all powerful but on the other side us is extremely powerful they don't require our friendship okay so we are very much satisfied that they are asking for our friendship his people are many they are like the grass that covers vast prairies you see the picture beside there is you know miles and miles of grassland when you see the grassland we uh, the chief seattle is comparing this to the number of people of the white americans there are thousands of people they are growing in number their land is growing they are becoming richer and richer they are gaining more and more people but what is happening to us how are they compared my people are few so we have just a few people they resemble the scattering trees of a storm swept plain just like the other picture below you see we are like a storm swept plain after a storm what happens all the trees are uprooted and you know the trees are uh, not even standing they're not even in a good condition the land is devastated destroyed so that is the condition of us so this is the difference you can be asked a question from here what are the uh, white americans compared to and what are the uh, native americans compared to all right next the great and i presume good so i presume means i think that great chief or the big chief they are obviously good people whatever promise they are making that is true so if we can believe in those words he wishes to buy our land but is willing to allow us enough to live comfortably so what is happening what is the thing there was the information that has come from governor stevens or the big chief or the great chief whoever it is information is we want your land so the white americans are asking for whose land for the native americans land you see in that map you remember that small place squamish that particular place they are you know they want to take it away what is this happening this is imperialism as i told you today i have this much land tomorrow i want this particular land also so that i can extend my property so that i can earn more profit more land meant more profit more income more business okay more factories maybe so uh, this is the thing that they wanted from the native americans they wanted to take away their land they wanted to take away their land but they were they were ready to give them a small part of the land maybe you are living in a big house maybe there are five rooms in your house and you are told that you go far away you live in one particular far away room and all the other rooms will be of somebody else okay and in return what is the uh, white american going to give them 
uh, uh, this, but is willing to allow us enough to live comfortably. This indeed appears just, even generous, for the red man no longer has rights that he need respect and the offer may be wise also as we are no longer in need of an extensive country. You see, we have been devastated so many times, we could not protect ourselves. Repeatedly there were threats, there were attacks from this side and that side and we kept on fighting and our people died and so what happened? We don't even have that power to protest. To protest we need power, isn't it? We need a number of people to fight for our rights. But we don't have anybody. So this is this is like a generous offer that somebody wants to protect us and in return they want our land also. So we would better give it away because we are rarely anything. Anybody coming and attacking us might kill everybody over here. Okay, so we are at great risk and this is a kind of benefit also for us. So this is this is the time when Chief Seattle says the positive side of, you know, the, uh, of giving away their land to the white Americans. We will also see the negative side soon. I hope this much is clear, the first page. We will move to the second page. There was a time when our people covered the land as the waves of a wind ruffled sea cover a shell paved floor. This is another description. Wind ruffled sea means when the surface, sometimes when you see there is a wind, you will see that maybe you are sitting by the side of a river, you will see that uh, the water, the surface of the water will, you know, move a little bit. Okay, so that is the kind of a movement on the sea because of the wind. So sometimes once upon a time, you see the picture beside, you'll be able to understand. Once upon a time, we used to live in a big land and when you see, uh, you know, the beach all covered with shells, it is quite similar to how they used to live in their land. There was a big land and they used to live around happily all around like the shells on the beach. But now what has happened? But that time long since passed away. That time is gone. With the greatness of tribes that are now but a mournful memory. So that when we were once upon a time a big tribe and we lived in large numbers in this place very happily. Now that time is gone. I will not dwell on, not mourn over, I will not be sad about it. Our untimely decay, we, we may not have been devastated so fast. We are, uh, we are destroyed so fast and, and I never expected that. But even then, when this has happened, I will accept it. Because I cannot reproach my pale face brothers. Who are the pale face brothers? Obviously the whites, the white Americans. I cannot blame them for what has happened to us. Why? Because as we too may have been somewhat to blame, we are to blame, okay, we are responsible for it. If I am not successful, I am also responsible for it, isn't it? So, so I should take that responsibility. Obviously, there were threats coming from different sides, but I am also responsible for what has happened to me. Now, why he is responsible or why he is taking the responsibility, uh, this also Chief Seattle is going to explain. Youth is impulsive. That means every young person, this you also have read in Merchant of Venice, I guess. In Merchant of Venice, you will see Portia says that I, I am very, you know, I, you know, I am like a hare. My, my heart is like a hare jumping around, does not want to listen to my brain. Okay, so same way young people are very, you know, they take, they, they are very active and they, without even thinking anything, they will do it. Okay. Like you will love to play PUBG before the exam. Same thing. When our young men grow angry at some real or imaginary dawn and disfigure their faces with black paint, it denotes that their hearts are black and that they are often cruel and relentless and our old men and old women are unable to restrain them. So what had happened? Whenever they were attacked, you see in this map also you can see the squamish, uh, I hope you can see the squamish uh, portion. Over there they were constantly threatened by different people, okay, from north, from south, from Britain, everywhere. So they were they, so the young people kept on fighting they were always very enthusiastic they felt no I cannot you know give away I cannot let them uh, you know devastate us or destroy us or loot us so we will keep fighting so they went fighting without any proper planning and what happened they were killed they were devastated the old men and women the fathers and the mothers they could not stop the young people from going to fight and what happened in return? Thus it has ever been. Thus it was when the white man began to push our forefathers ever westward. So the white people came and you see the Squamish tribe, they are already this side. So they were, moved, they were pushed. Their land was slowly taken away from them and they were slowly, 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 slowly pushed westward. Alright. That means their land was taken away from them. But let us hope that the hostilities between us may never return. So I just hope that we will not be enemies when we are living in one land. We hope that the white Americans and the natives will live together. They will not keep fighting. 
we would have everything to lose and nothing to gain because we have everything to lose uh, what will we gain our land is also being taken away our young young people are also dead so what are we left to lose so revenge by young men is considered gain even at the cost of their own lives but old men who stay at home in times of war and mothers who have sons to lose no better so you see young people always think that revenge is the best thing okay you have done this to me so i will take revenge and show it to you okay that is what young people think that they must take revenge that is the most important thing but the mothers and the fathers they don't want to lose their children isn't it in war so in times of war these children were dead and the family lost their children so they kept on suffering the old men and women i hope this page is also clear to you let's move to the next one our good father in washington for i presume he is now our father as well as yours since king george british uh, you see king george is talking about the british colonization during that time us was also attacked by british people okay they were constantly attacked and their land was being taken away so uh, they were also facing a lot of danger from the from king george who was uh, you know increasing his power over these places had moved his boundaries further north our great and good father i say sends us word that if who is this great and good father obviously george washington who says that you give me your land i'll protect you so uh, the, so i we want protection from king george who can attack us any day and his brave warriors will be to us a bristling wall of strength and his wonderful ships of war will fill our harbors so that our ancient enemies far to the northward the haidas and chimchians so who are haidas as in simshans they are the north american indigenous people who have traditionally occupied the coastal bays and inlets in the british columbia this is important questions can come who are haidas and simshans these are some indigenous people who also from the north they came in and attack, attacked them and killed them devastated them so there were a number of threats you see king george from uh, britain but here you have the uh, the haidas and simshans so there are number of enemies here and there and what has uh, us offered us has offered king, uh, george washington has offered them safety they have said that uh, we will protect your harbors okay the problem comes from the sea side only anybody can come in ships and attack them so we will protect your harbor so that nobody can attack you will cease to frighten our women children and old women, old men so if us protects us then at least we will no more be threatened by uh, the uh, by the ancient enemies by the other enemies of us then in reality he will be our father and we his children but can that ever be your god is not our god so we cannot think you as your as our father okay you cannot be our father why because you see our god is not now he moves to a bit of spirituality to religion he says your god is not our god we have different uh, faith okay and your god loves your people and hates mine he folds his strong protecting arms loving about the pale face loving about the whites and leads him by the hand as a father leads an infant son so you see there is very there is a lot of difference between how your god treats you and how your god treats us so your god cannot be both of our gods isn't it because father takes care of both the sons equally isn't it is not that a father loves x more and y less isn't it if x and y are the two children father loving x more and y less this is never possible but here we see that the your god takes care of you more and does not even bother about us so he takes care of you just like an infant young child doing everything for you and doing nothing for us that's why you are uh, you know you are growing and growing and becoming richer and richer but we are falling and falling and falling losing everything next but he has forsaken his red children if they really are his so if we think that red children the red indians are obviously uh, your god's children then we cannot trust it because we don't see your god protecting us our god the great spirit seems also to have forsaken us your so not it's not just your god does not take care of us even our god uh, we believe in the great spirit we, we we believe in him but he also seems to not care about us God makes your people wax stronger every day. Wax, you see, more you will stick together and together and together. You'll grow. But what happens to us? 
you will fill all the land our people are ebbing away like a rapidly receding tide that will never return go back to the first picture you see in this page the first picture over there you will see that the water is slowly returning going back into the sea and slowly slowly it is moving away same way our people are growing lesser 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 and they are going to finish one day they will become extinct soon so our god nor your god is protecting us the white man's god cannot love our people or he would protect them if your god was our god he would also be protecting us and not letting us finish isn't it they seem to be orphans who can look nowhere for help how can we be brothers how can your god become our god and renew our prosperity and awaken in us dreams of returning greatness so you see uh, uh, your god will never protect us and we will never be able to dream of returning greatness we will ever we will never be able to dream that maybe sometime we will soon be able to successfully live our life or we will be able to successfully carry out our life happily that is not possible because your god is never going to protect us and we seem to be doomed and destroyed and if not destroyed we will soon be destroyed okay so uh, here we come to an end to today's uh, portion because this is uh, almost half of it is over so i hope you have been able to understand this part we will soon in the next class move to the second and the last part of chief seattle and i will tell you that uh, do opt for this uh, chapter because you see the questions are very simple over here if you have understood this part and if you then follow the questions that i give i hope you'll be very uh, it will be very easy for you to understand and answer all the questions so if you have liked the video uh, i will request you to do subscribe to my channel and also write to me if you have any doubts i will try to answer you maybe one or two times i am not able to answer you because there are hundreds of comments and it sometimes takes some time but uh, yes i'll try to solve it and uh, if you have doubts clarify them if you have if you have liked it do hit the like button okay bye bye that's all for today